Welcome. This is a 1 hour 15 minute cell biology lecture, squished down to 10 minutes or less, that focuses on tested material. In the second lecture, we will cover the basics of cell organelles and transport within the cell. The first thing we need to talk about is the cytoplasm, which includes the organelle suspended in it. It's also called the cytosol, mostly made of water, and it is the site of protein synthesis and degradation and the site of glycolysis. The nucleus will have its own lectures associated with it, but right now it contains the genome and is the principal site of DNA and RNA synthesis. Its membrane is similar to the membrane of the cell. It has integral proteins, it has an outer and an inner layer, and much like the fatty acid tails, it has this space. Um, but it has these nuclear pore complexes, which are the channels or the holes that you would see in most pictures of a nucleus. And as you can see, the lamina, which is the scaffolding, is underneath of it. Now, when talking about the actual channel, there's something called FG domains. This is something that will be tested. It stands for phenylalanine and glycine, and it is like these little fibers here that allow things to pass by. Um, let's see, the nuclear envelope is, you know, the membrane. There's scaffolding, which is holding the actual channel material here, and there are rings. There is a cytoplasmic ring, which has little filaments or hairs um, that may allow things to go away or may guide things in, like a air traffic control person or something. And the inner ring has the nuclear basket. All right, we will move on to mitochondria now. Mitochondria generates ATP and is very much like its own bacteria. It's theorized that they used to be separate bacteria that invaded animal cells. They like to leech off of our food and in return they provide us with energy. They have their own DNA that you inherit from your mother and um, just know these anatomical parts. The crista membrane, you know, uh, the crista are these little inner folds and just know that there is an acidic space here. So there's actually two layers of separation. Everything is double wrapped in the cell, just remember that. We move on to the lysosome, which contains digestive enzymes and acids. And uh, there's this term topologically equivalent, which means that from this point on, lysosomes, endoplasmic reticulum, all that, they have the same skin much like how you can mix different colors of play-doh and it's still play-doh uh, the same thing happens here so the lysosome is noticeably more acidic than the rest of the cell it contains enzymes that will degrade DNA and RNA proteins sugars it will degrade fats and all these other things and will make itself acidic using ATPase proton pumps. So it takes ATP and it'll pump in acids. All right, we have the endoplasmic reticulum next. It's continuous with the nucleus, meaning it's attached to the nuclear envelope. It's like flattened tubes, so think of it like a freeway. And when it is associated with ribosomes, it means attached. So ribosomes are the site of protein synthesis, you know, when you take mRNA and you get tRNA and it makes proteins, it's attached directly to this endoplasmic reticulum at the rough ER. And it goes on, it continues, and eventually it could either be the Golgi apparatus or smooth endoplasmic reticulum, which has no attached ribosomes, but it's the site of lipid synthesis. And as you know, all the membranes contain phospholipids. So this is how, this is where the cell grows. Uh, grows its membrane, you know, that's how the cell gets larger or makes new organelles. The next part, we talk about transitional ER, which is somewhere in between. Uh, usually that's where materials are processed and moved. In the liver cells, the smooth ER is known for detoxification and as a note into the next section, phosphatidylcholine, which is, as you remember, 
plasma membrane material. It's exclusively made on the cytosolic leaflet of the smooth ER. What this means is it only makes phosphatidylcholine on one side. So what does that look like? As you can see, when it only makes it on one side, you have these gaps over here. And you can't have that in a membrane. So now you have scramblase, which is a enzyme. It allows the phosphatidylcholine to flip-flop, which, as we covered in the previous lecture, does not happen by itself. So now you have random components on the other side. And that's fine, but for the plasma membrane, which is asymmetrical and has order to it and prefers the glycolipids on the outside and all that stuff, it needs flippase to selectively uh, sort which phospholipids go where. So remember, scramblase is just basic flip-flopping, it's random, and flippase makes it orderly or organizes it. So now we go to the Golgi apparatus, which is an ordered series of compartments and is considered the biological UPS center. It's associated with endosomes, which are just vesicles of materials taken in by the cell. It's the site of carbohydrate synthesis. It's responsible for dispatching and modifying cargo. All right, actually, let's go back here. Uh, the trans-Golgi network is the more chaotic looking side and it's going away from the cell or facing outward away from the nucleus and the cis, which means same, is facing the nucleus. Alright, the endocytic secretory pathway is something that seems confusing but it should really just uh, be focused on clathrin here. Uh, COP1 and COP2. COP2 is associated with the ER and COP1 is the Golgi apparatus. That's really all you need to know of those two things. Clathrin is like your weird aunt that likes to pinch your cheeks. So as you can see here, it's pinching the membrane here, which grabs a little bit of, you know, the outside material, makes a little vesicle here, and goes to the Golgi apparatus and it can dump cargo all the way into the ER sometimes and the shape that it makes when it's doing this um, is called a triskelion so tri you know three and scale you could just think of like skeleton so triskelions are you take these little hook things these Y clathrin pieces it has light chain and heavy chains and it makes like a soccer ball so here you have the membrane and you have these receptors. When the receptors get the cargo attached to them, they get adapter proteins to attract the clathrin. It forms a triskelion and once fully developed, the clathrin goes away and now you have a vesicle. And once, you know, the vesicle travels to where it needs to go, it docks. So you have T snares and V snares. T is for target snare and a V snare is a vesicle snare. So you have a V snare and Rab GTP. Rab GTP is a G protein and when this docks onto the Rab effector or tethering protein then the V snare and T snares will form. They will grab each other. Rab GTP becomes Rab GDP and the membranes from that energy will fuse together and it'll dump you know the cargo inside cisternal maturation model i mean this is not this was not really tested for me so um yeah and the final slide is saying uh that the golgi cisterna goes to the trans golgi network you have these vesicles which might be you know, kind of big and not too much cargo. Vesicles can add together and the triskelions can pinch off extra pieces so that you have vesicles that are extremely concentrated because it won't waste material. Thank you for watching and uh, like and subscribe for more content and have a nice day.